Melissa, hello. Hello. hello, how are you? <laughs> Very well. It's good to see you. Um, Liza, we met at InspireFest in Dublin last year in 2018 um, when you were, we were both speaking and you were um, visually recording. You were uh, drawing from stage during your keynote, which I found in incredible. Um, you were described, or I would describe you as a cartoonist, but you're so much more than that. You're an author, you're a humanitarian. How would you describe yourself? Well, cartooning, cartoonist is a good beginning, um, and that's where I started. Uh, but I also call myself a writer and a uh, speaker. And uh, now because I do this digital live drawing, um, I call myself a visual journalist as well. So it covers a lot of, of ground. The visual journalism I I do by drawing events uh, for the news, for uh, news outlets. I, I report with my drawings. I, I go around and I draw on a tablet, but I also can share immediately on social media um, and, in, and in posts. So visual journalist is a, is a good blanket term for me. When one of the things I've realized is that this series of interviews is much more about um, reflection and how people reflect upon their communication. Your, you returned to the Inspire Fest stage this past summer, and your keynote struck me because you talked about really moving from observation to listening and how, in the midst of the political cacophony, you you seem to realize you were listening more. Can, can you talk a little bit about that shift? Yes, well, the shift began uh, before I got to InspireFest because I, um, I, I, I wrote a talk for, uh, to, to get to South by Southwest. Uh, and in the, in the description of the talk that you have to put together, they say, what are your three takeaways? And I thought, takeaways? I mean, I never think of talks that way. I'm not that kind of speaker, I haven't been. So, but it was a nice exercise to help me focus on what it, what it is I'm trying to get my audience. What am I trying to give them? Because it's really all about giving, right? Um, and so when I wrote that talk for South by Southwest, which I did deliver, um, my takeaways, I sort of began to think about myself as a cartoonist and having been a cartoonist, cartoonist for 40 years and what have I learned from being a cartoonist because those of us who do this for a living we have done long enough we've learned how to observe and to look of course because we're visual people but also to listen and not just listen and not picking up on people's words to, to reuse them and it's not that kind of listening it's more like listening what people are saying what they're feeling what they're doing so that combined with watching them, observing. We're professional observers. We're like anthropologists, cartoonists. We, we observe people. And so that's my takeaways were, um, and I used that for the InspireFest as well. My takeaways were to, and I think actually, those are the things I've learned over the years doing this. But I think those things, those three things, listen, uh, watch, let's see, listen, watch, and wait was the third one. Um, that they're they're, they're tools that everybody can use in life, and particularly now with the internet being so loud and everybody has an opinion and everybody's shouting at each other. Um, I, think, I think if, if we just, just take a breath and wait and really listen to the other person and, um, and watch them, look at them, and then, and then wait, don't react immediately. Don't, don't jump in right away. Don't feel you need to, to get your word in right away. So those are the three things I thought that I learned and that I thought I could pass along to my audience. So. Can you separate listening and watching um, besides just the pure uh, physicality, the, the difference between the two? Are there different things that you learn that you take away that you hope to hope for as a result of listening versus watching? Since I was a kid, I was very shy, so I watched a lot. And I guess I listened too, but I didn't speak. Um, 
I mean, people, that's a very good question, Taylor. People don't always say uh, that what they're saying and what they're doing that they're not always work well together. Um, so I guess my job is just to, to take them both in and, and try, to, try to synthesize what's going on. Um, and I'm not talking about individuals necessarily, I'm just talking about culture, like what's going on in the culture. You have to listen, listen to lots of different sources. I listen, I read and listen to a lot of news and, and cultural publications and, and I watch people. I mean, that's why, one of the reasons why I love New York City is I, I'm always watching people. I get a lot of inspiration being in New York. I get a lot of inspiration of your, um, the observations and the drawings that you do as you travel around the world and you post them. I, I find them uh, so much more interesting than a lot of straight travel blogs that I read. And, and I thank you for those. I... Yeah, I do try to draw when I, when I travel all over the world. I, um, I draw when I'm in a city and I have some time, I draw what I see and, and I don't just draw the, the famous monuments the famous sites, I try to draw what I see, the people, what, make, what might make that city unique um, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a little thing way, because little things to me are what are important in, in getting to know culture. And can I ask you a little bit more about this culture and what you've observed? And again, in the, the Inspire Fest 2019 talk that I saw, you are deeply dealing with being an American right now and what it's like to uh, listen and watch and wait now in America versus perhaps 39 years ago when you started on your cultural anthropology. Yeah. Well, it's really not that different. I mean, I'm, I mean, from my perspective, people are people and they're still people, but the, internet, which I love. I mean, I love social media. Um, I use it a lot. It's a tool that I enjoy and I, I've met some of my best friends on social media. Um, it's confusing people. I think it's, 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 you know, you read stories about young teenagers that are always on their phones and they're liking and they're sharing and they're liking and they're looking at other people's lives. And so they don't, they don't really, they're not really well, they're looking, but they're not seeing reality. They're seeing like fake news. I'm, I'm thinking as we speak, they're seeing a, a curated life in their friends. You know, they're seeing what, what their friends want them to see. And we all do that to a certain extent, I guess, in life anyway. We, we put ourselves together, we wear clothes, we want people to, to see us a certain way. But um, social media is taking it up a notch and um, making it much more artificial. So. I hadn't thought about that. But yeah, yeah. It is much different that way. That the, 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 we're we're confused by different realities. You know, what we see on the street, but then what we see on Facebook or on on Twitter, or whatever it is. And then and then people uh, are are pitting each pitting themselves against each other. They're like they're fighting. They're they're arguing. They're and, and social media is giving a voice to a lot of people, which is great. I mean, it gave me a voice in many ways, but uh, that means, means for a lot of loudness. So. I'd like to ask you a little bit about having a voice. As you've talked about listening and watching and waiting, but again, I met you while you were speaking, um, although you were drawing, uh, which was extraordinary, live drawing, um, and you, talked about the South by Southwest. Can you tell me about the, the difference or the, even the difficulties, the challenges you have between being a listener and a, a, an observational journalist and a speaker? Mm -hmm. um, well, first thing I wanted to tell you that the drawing on stage um, is really interesting because what I did, it's, at Inspire Fest was I walk on stage and when a, when a speaker walks on stage, the audience expects them to speak. And what I do is I go on stage and I don't say a word. I just start drawing the audience and it throws people off a little bit and it force, I think it forces them to think and really listen and not be passive. They're, they're, 
they're interacting with me as I draw them. They're looking at me drawing them and like, who's she drawing or why is she doing that? Why hasn't she said anything? So it's, it sort of stirs the pot a little bit. And I enjoy that um, because I like silence and, and I'm a quiet person. So um, using silence as a tool is, is, uh, is fun. <laughs> um, so back to your question. Uh, Well, I didn't, I didn't really know that I liked public speaking. Um, when I first started doing, doing it, it was uh, probably 10, 12 years ago. And I had written a book about the women cartoonists of the New Yorker in history. And I was passionate, still I'm passionate about that subject. I love those women and I'm fascinated with the idea that there were women drawing cartoons in the 20s. So um, I created my own little book tour and I, and I created a speech and I, and I went around the Midwest and around the Northeast and I, and I talked about these women. And I, I, before I left, I talked to an actor friend of mine. I said, what, what's something you can help me with my, my nerves? I'm really ner terribly nervous. And he said, um, the one thing he said, that's all I needed from him and I still use it, is it's not about you. And it's so true because it's not about me. It's about, in this case, it was about these women that I really wanted to share what I found out about these women and who they were and, and why they're important. Um, so uh, that helped me tremendously get over any major nervousness. I still took me many years to get over it, but uh, um, just remembering that it's not, it's not about me. Um, it's about what I want to tell the audience. And that's sort of my, before I go on stage, that's, that's what I, I, I sit quietly somewhere off to the side and, and just, breathe and repeat that to myself over and over again. Um, so trying to, to remember to connect to the audience and, and, and share with them. It's about sharing. I mean, and that's also, Thaler, that's what cartooning is for me, is sharing. It's like, that's how I see it. That's how I use it. Is I have, I have an idea and I'm drawing it and I want to show it to you. What do you think? It's less for me about, um, necessarily making you laugh, although I enjoy making people smile or laugh. It's less about me trying to show somebody how smart I am or what I know or, or um, how I'm uh, more uh, clever than the next person. So um, it's about sharing. It's about dialogue. And I think uh, visuals, cartoon visuals, really connect with people in a way that words often don't. So that's why I love it's like, a, it's like an exciting time for me where I can combine the visuals because I always show, not only do I live draw on stage, but I show my drawings behind me. And I'm not like standing there talking about the drawing. I'm saying a point and the drawing, all of a sudden, if it, I, I make it show up, it accentuates the point or it, it adds a little bit of a dimension to the point. Um, and it makes people laugh sometimes. So it's, it's an interesting tool that I've been able to, to use. Is there anything that you want to um, listen to or watch that's on your wish list? I've been listening to storytelling on the moth uh, lately. That's, is that the question you, you mean? Uh, and I love hearing these audio stories. Uh, in many cases, they're very visual. Um, just the way they're written, the way they're told. Because I really, you know, because I was so quiet growing up, I, I don't think I ever learned to be a good storyteller with my voice. Um, I'm married to a man who is a cartoonist also, but he's also a great storyteller. He'll, he'll tell a story about his childhood and he'll just, you know, he won't make it up. He won't change the facts, but he'll embellish it and, and make it into a story. And that's something I really want to learn how to do better. Um, learn how to talk more. Um, I'm very minimal in my speaking, although I seem to be talking a lot to you today. Um, just learning how to engage people. So I'm listening to the moth. Uh, I've, I've been studying um, improv, done a little stand-up, trying to open myself up to more possibilities, keeping my core, hopefully, open myself up to other ways to, to dialogue with people using my person and my voice and my visuals together, combined together. 
I did improv when I started my business. I was much older than the students in my class. Um, you, my, my second improv teacher is now the creative partner in, in my business. Um, but improv to me was about teamwork. It was also meditative to me. It, it helped me enter into this idea of presence and being there and letting go of expectation and presumption. Yeah. Letting go of, of yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, because it's all about um, listening, right? It's about waiting your turn. It's about helping the other person too. So it's not, it's not about you. So that's, yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's really, it's about getting out of your own way. Right. And I feel like doing cartoons for 40 years, I've, not that I've gotten in my way, but I feel like I got into a, um, I got so really tired of being so careful. I mean, I think I, my cartoons are, um, some of them are looser than others, but they're, they're, I don't, I'm, I don't want to say crafted because I feel like the cartoons that, the kind of cartoons I do, the kind of cartoons you see in the New Yorker, which is what I do, they're, they're often an express, an expression of an art, artist's voice. They're not just about the joke. They're about a worldview from that particular cartoonist. And that's, that's what I've tried to do for 40 years. Um, and I think you can sometimes get stuck in, in, a, in a routine, you know, doing, doing what you think works. Um, so I've been trying to open up more and do more, um, like doing the op improv and the stand up to, to learn how to just get at my voice or get at what's really inside me and get it out uh, in, a, in an unhampered way, you know, it's not easy. Well, thank you for sharing your voice so much uh, with me today. I, I cherish your voice and I, um, in, I'm enamored and inspired by the different ways in which you express it um, and how you can take one medium and use it for listening and watching and for cultural commentary and for sharing and for um, for worldview and politics, and, and I thank you very much, Liza. Well, thank you, Thaler. Thanks for this opportunity to talk. It's, it's really fun. <laughs>